I have lots of new paintings to digitize for art prints, so come along with me for today. So this is the difference between these ways to digitize your art. I'll show you both how I scan and take photos of my art and we'll compare the results, but let's start with scanning. I start by wiping off dust from the scanner and it's good to do the same for your artwork. And especially if it's a watercolor painting on paper and it's a little buckled or warped, I'll press it down by adding a pile of white printer paper on top and sometimes even a weight on the scanner lid. For scanning thicker canvas paintings, it's useful if the lid comes off. If you're varnishing or sealing the artwork with fixative, remember to scan or take the photo first because sealing can alter the colors and it can make it shiny, which means that the light reflects from it and it's very difficult to photograph. I'll usually scan in 600 dpi, but depending on what you'll use the artwork for, 300 might be enough. And I'll set the file format to PNG. I got a question on an old video about how I scan big paintings on paper that don't fit in an A4 size scanner. Isn't it better to just set up two professional lights on the left and on the right and photograph it with a good lens with a camera on a tripod? Now, if you have all of that, or you have easy access to using a photography studio, then sure. But I suspect most of us making art don't. So it's not the most helpful advice for someone wanting to make art and turn it into prints and merch at home. My approach has always been more of a DIY and using cheaper things or using things I already have available and slowly upgrading when I feel like I absolutely need to. So could you take a photo of it? Yes, and in some cases you need to when you can't fit something in a scanner. But I'm gonna show you the same artwork scanned and photographed with a digital camera in comparison later in the video and you can decide for yourself. I'm also testing taking the photo with my phone to see how that compares to the camera because my phone camera resolution is slightly higher. If you have a newer or a more expensive camera or phone, you might be able to take better resolution photos. But you also need to try to position the artwork and the camera so that the art isn't warped in the photo and the lighting should be equal on both sides. I don't have professional lighting, so I'm using daylight by taking the photos next to a window, but not in direct sunlight so the photos aren't overexposed. And I can't get the lighting completely equal on both sides, so I had to edit the photos in two layers to get the lighting more equal. You also need to have the camera on a tripod or something that holds it in place so you can set a timer so that you pressing or tapping it to take the photo won't shake the camera and affect the outcome. So to me, it's just more complicated than scanning. You'll need to do some editing on the scans or photos afterwards, but it doesn't matter which image editing software you use. I'm using GIMP here. It's free and it's the one I've been using the most consistently, but there's also Canva, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Photopea, lots of paid and free options. The basic things I'll do to edit the art is tilted if it's not straight, crop it to the right size, sharpen it, adjust the black levels and exposure or brightness and contrast, increase saturation and use the clone tool or the healing tool to remove specks of dust or bristles from the paintbrush or little mistakes in the artwork. And I'll export the image as PNG, sometimes also as JPEG depending on where I'll use the image. It reduces the image size and quality and removes transparency. Now, comparing the results, let's take Redbubble as an example print-on-demand shop where you might upload your art. Redbubble recommends uploading an image that's at least 9000 by 6000 pixels to cover all product types they have. Some of them you could do a repeating pattern for, so you don't actually need an image that big, but the bigger the image is, the more products you can enable. This is a comparison of the same artwork scanned, photo taken with phone and photo with a camera. 
so you can see the difference in resolution. I'm able to get much closer to that required size with the scanner than with the cameras I have. And this is the difference of the unedited images. On the other hand, when the canvas is too big for the scanner and it doesn't touch the glass, it gets blurry and it's a much worse quality than the photos. Now, in another comment, someone pointed out that the scanner I'm using is probably not a CCD scanner. I googled my scanner and turns out it uses CIS technology. CIS scanners are cheaper, faster, need less maintenance and use less power, but CCD is used for high quality scans of art graphics because they have better color reproduction and are better able to scan folds or uneven surfaces. But if you're interested in seeing the difference between a CIS and a CCD scan, I might be able to find a CCD scanner at a library, for example, to test it in another video. What if you have art on a bigger paper that doesn't fit in the scanner? Watch this video next to see how I scan bigger art. See you there!